Welcome back. You're watching Wealth Manager. 40,000 crores of tax-free bonds are expected to hit the market in the next few months. Anil Rego, CEO and co-founder of Right Horizon Financial Services, joins us to talk about why these bonds have come at the right time, especially for h &I investors. Anil, thanks very much for joining me on the show. Let me start by asking you that for an h &I or somebody who wants to invest more than 10 lakhs, how much more tax efficient would such tax-free bonds be? Yeah, it's very beneficial for the HNI because he is in the you know top bracket, and many times maybe he also has a surcharge for you know those uh, people above one crore. Uh, so uh, assuming that you got a bank FD which gives you let's say eleven percent, and uh, you had a tax rate of thirty percent, which means you keep seventy percent of it. It means that net you would only get seven point seven percent. Okay, so this is something what you know you would get post-tax in a tax-free bond and uh, so, so that is definitely you know giving you uh, somewhere between 10 and 11 percent pre-tax and uh, it is a very good option to use for people at the highest tax bracket. Okay so with 10, 15 and 20 year durations how should one assess which duration to opt for? See all of these are long-term bonds so uh, between you know 10, 15 and 20 uh, it would depend on the perspective let's say if somebody has let's say a pension or so that he wants for say 15 or 20 years, then he can look at the longer duration. If if some person is little more aged, then maybe he could go for the 10 years. What one needs to keep in mind is there's also liquidity available, which means that you know you can go and sell it on the exchange. And uh, in a scenario where interest rates fall, you may actually make you know a bit of an extra return in capital gains. Okay. So in case one wants to exit early, uh, how would that work? In fact, to take your prior point forward, what's the kind of secondary market debt for these kind of bonds? Yes, yeah, so you could, you know, as part of your normal trading account, today most of these bonds are listed. The trading volumes is decent, may not be the best like equities, but yeah, you would actually be able to sell it. Maybe you may not get the yield that you want or your desire to get. Uh, so example is today, maybe the 8.8% .8 tax-free bonds are available somewhere around you know 7.25 to 7.5 percent in fact you, that's the other option you can go and buy it on the exchange existing bonds if the yields of the new issues come out lower you can actually go and use them as well okay so exactly so currently the earlier issues are at a premium so what's the kind of capital gains that an investor can uh, expect in case of an earlier exit yeah see the, uh, there was a sharp drop in interest rate earlier i don't think you can expect the same drop you know in the days to come so from here, I would expect the bonds to come somewhere around 7.2 to maybe 7.5 percent or so. Uh, and depending on that, let's say if interest rates go down from here further, you know, is where you will get appreciation. I think on a long-term basis, maybe you can uh, easily expect at least two to three percent additional return, uh, assuming that you you know want to exit it when interest rates are actually lower than what they are today. Okay. So, uh, in these bonds, interest is of course paid annually, so one would also need to ensure that they don't require it as a regular source of income, right? Yes, yeah, so these bonds give you interest annually, so uh, what you could do is maybe you could even, if you don't need that interest, you could probably do an SIP uh, and, uh, you know, put it into either a debt fund or an, maybe an equity fund, and uh, that could be the way if, you know, it's a little earlier than when you actually want, you know, your returns. Okay. And how would you compare these funds to FMP schemes, for example? The FMP schemes uh, maybe are much shorter duration. Uh, of course, nowadays you have many of the FMP schemes here at three years. So that is a tenure that maybe you can look at them. FMP schemes also, you know, are probably a little less liquid than uh, these bonds. Okay. So if you want it in between, then maybe, you know, your tax-free bonds are a little better. Uh, again, the duration of these bonds are much, you know, longer. So it works both ways. In a period where interest rates come down, uh, you know, you would find larger capital appreciation maybe in your tax-free bonds. In a period where interest rates go up, so in case you have volatility in the upside and interest rates go up, then maybe you may even see a discount for some time. But the long-term perspective, considering that inflation has come down, you know, is that interest rates also come down a little bit. So at this point, you know, uh, not only are they attractive for the pre-tax returns, but an investor can also look at it uh, as a strategic way, especially h &I saying that, okay, I want to capture the you know, interest rate fall and make additional return beyond even the capital, even the interest as capital gains. That can also be an option that you know, high net worth individuals uh, can take. 
Right. So, what would be your recommendation in terms of what portion of an HNI's debt portfolio should be allocated to these kind of bonds? See, it would depend from person to person. But let's say if I have a long term, let's say retirement need, I think there's nothing better than this. You can just go and lock in a lot of money into it. Let's say if your uh, PF is, let's say you're just uh, retiring and your PF is coming out, then again, you can go and take and just put that money in because they are very uh, safe uh, institutions which are offering these bonds. Okay, so there you can have much larger, but I think uh, it's it's a question of liquidity that an investor wants. So I I would even be okay with putting a significant portion of all my long term uh, requirements of debt, so which can go maybe between twenty five to say fifty percent of uh, one's debt portfolio. Okay, and finally, Anil, what's the kind of investor appetite that you see for such bonds, and how do you view the market absorption levels? Yeah, the last series of bond issues actually saw a lot of oversubscription. and i think that you know tax free bonds are an interesting option for high net worth individuals uh, uh, there were a lot of issues that actually uh, they were expecting more issues and somewhere this didn't happen for a long period of time so i believe that you know they will see some reasonably good response all right i'll leave it there thanks very much for joining me all right time for another quick break we'll come back with a product review segment demystified stay tuned